What better way to get to know Italy than with a trip combining three of the country's most magnificent cities, Rome, Florence, and Venice. Each offers its own unique charm, with an extensive history showcasing art, architecture, and delicious cuisine. Welcome to Multi-City Trips, the multi-destination travel expert for personalized multi-city trips to Europe. And in today's video, we present to you our exclusive travel guide and tips on how to plan one of our favorite European itineraries, the 10-day classic Italian itinerary to Rome, Florence, and Venice. New to our travel channel? We post new videos every Monday and Thursday, so subscribe now and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our latest travel guides, inspiration, tips, and amazing travel itineraries available to your favorite destinations in Europe. If you are thinking about planning a trip to Italy and visiting these amazing cities all in one trip, you have come to the right place, so get ready because this is your Italy travel guide, the 10-day itinerary to Rome, Florence, and Venice by train. To help you to experience only the best and make the most of your time visiting these amazing Italian cities in 10 days, we break down our guide into three parts the trip overview, the trip preparation, and the day-to-day -day itinerary. In the trip overview, we give you a quick introduction and some of the highlights of your 10-day trip so you get a sense of what to expect. The preparation for the trip will cover what you need for this trip and how to prepare for this trip, such as choosing flights, hotels, transportation, and more. In the day-to-day -day itinerary, we'll take a closer look at your daily plans which include all the recommended things you can see and do each day. We included many recommendations and tips throughout this entire video to help make your trip planning to Italy a breeze. So stick around and watch until the end of this video to get the most out of this travel guide. Let's begin. Part 1. The Trip Overview 10 days, 9 nights, this trip is a perfect introduction to Italy. You will be spending three nights in each city and transfer between cities by train. On days one to four, you will be in Rome. You'll get to taste the flavors of the city on a guided street food tour with a local guide, plus see iconic landmarks like the Colosseum and the Trevi Fountain. Visit the Vatican City, the smallest country in the world, and explore many of Rome's amazing hidden gem. The next stop is Florence where you will be spending the next three days exploring Florence's famous sites, sampling local wines, and dining on local produce. You'll have a day to experience a day trip, too. Your choice of Tuscany countryside, Cinque Terra, or Pisa. Your last three days will be in Venice, where you'll learn more about the city with a tour from a local guide. Wandering the city's maze of canals and back streets at leisure, Visit St. Mark's Square, experience the early morning mass at the Basilica, and end your Italian experience with a gondola ride. Part 2. The Trip Preparation Choosing Flights To make the most of your time for this trip, a round trip to and from Rome is not what we'll recommend here. Instead, we suggest you choose a multi-city flight from your departure city into Rome and then a return flight out of Venice back to your location. There are two main airports in Rome. However, the FCO or the Leonardo da Vinci International Airport are the ones that you will need, especially if you are traveling directly from Canada or the US. Your favorite timing to depart from the US is actually the late afternoon or the evening flights the day before and plan to arrive in Rome in the morning. This way you can maximize your time and have a full day to explore as soon as you arrive on day one. As for Venice, you will depart out from VCE or the Venice Marco Polo Airport, so ensure you enter the correct airport code when making your flight reservation. Since Rome is a very popular European destination, you will find plenty of non-stop flights, and prices also vary depending on your departure locations and dates of travel. If you would like to get the most out of your flight, we actually recommend you look at the one-stop flights as well. Not only can you save big, but this is a great opportunity to take a mini vacation within your main vacation. For example, if you are departing from JFK, New York, you might have flight options to stop at cities such as London, Paris, Lisbon, and more. So go ahead and pick your favorite city with a layover time that is more than six hours long and get out to enjoy the city. 
Just make sure you allow enough time to return to the airport to continue your trip to Rome. Choosing Airport Transfers On this trip, you will need two airport transfers. At the beginning of the trip when arriving in Rome and again on your last day leaving to Venice Airport. These might sound simple, but please pay close attention to the following detail before determining the best option for your trip. The private transfer from FCO Airport directly to Rome Hotel can be a good option if you are traveling in a small group and each has more than one luggage bag. The cost is typically between $30 to $40 per person when arriving during the daytime. If you plan to arrive in Rome at night, the cost per person is much higher, but the convenience is still well worth it, especially if you arrive late at night in the Rome city center and public transportation, train, bus, and metro is no longer operational. When that happens, you have no choice but to transfer to your hotel on foot with your luggage. If planning to arrive late, you must also be sure to connect with your hotel prior to your arrival and let them know your arrival time. Many smaller hotels in Europe, especially in Italy, do not have a 24-hour front desk, which means there will be no one to check you in or even let you in the building if you arrive after their check-in hours. Traveling by train is also a very convenient and reasonable option to transfer from FCO Airport to Rome. It takes roughly 32 minutes and leaves the airport every half hour or every 15 minutes during peak hours. For about 14 euros, it will bring you right to Roma Termini, which is the main train station in Rome city center. Keep in mind, however, that you will then have to transfer to your hotel from there, either by bus, metro, taxi, or by foot, depending on where your hotel is located. Bus is another option and is a cost-effective way to transfer from the airport. With a price being as low as 6 euros, it will bring you right to the Roma Termini as well. The journey takes slightly over one hour. It's another great way to get to Rome if you are not too much in a rush. But once you arrive at the main station, similar to the train option, you will have to do another transfer to your hotel. The airport transfer from your hotel to VCE or the Marco Polo Airport in Venice at the end of this trip is completely different from Rome, since traveling by train is not an option. Depending on where your hotel is located in Venice, we recommend you take the water bus to Piazzale Roma Piers, and then from there, take the Atvo bus to Marco Polo Airport. The bus cost is only about 8 euros and it takes about 20 minutes to reach the airport. Ali Laguna Airport boat, costing between 8 to 15 euros, and water taxi, costing about 110 euros or more, are alternative options. But keep in mind that you will need to walk from the pier to the terminal when you reach the airport, which can take 10 minutes or so. Choosing Hotels For this trip, you will need 3 nights in Rome, 3 nights in Florence, and 3 nights in Venice. We recommend narrowing down your hotel choices to the ones that are within 1 mile or less from either the main train station or metro station and close to the city's important sites. This way you have a convenient way to get around the city and enjoy nearby attractions during your stay. Also, since you will be transferred between cities by train, you will have plenty of time to get to the station without worrying about arriving late and missing your next train. There are plenty of amazing hotels located near the metro or main stations in each city. To help you get started, we list some of our favorite hotels in each city on the video description below, so be sure to check them out. Choosing Transportation Between Cities The best way to transfer between these three cities is by train. You will need a one-way standard class train from the Roma Termini station in Rome to Firenze Santa Maria Novella or Stazione di Santa Maria Novella station in Florence. The average train ticket price from Rome to Florence usually costs around $52.53 two weeks before travel, but can start from as little as $10.14 when you book in advance. The journey between Rome and Florence is just 1 hour and 30 minutes. You will need another ticket from this same station in Florence to Venezia Santa Lucia station in Venice. Train tickets from Florence to Venice start at $10.14 one way for a standard class ticket if you book in advance. However, if you're booking last minute tickets on the day, the average price is around $54.57. 
Many high-speed trains make the daily journey between Venice and Florence in just two hours and five minutes. One other great thing about traveling by train is that you get to enjoy the scenery along the way. Plus, Italy's high-speed trains are equipped with air conditioning, Wi-Fi, and electrical outlets at your seat. So while you are relaxing, you can recharge any devices you might need for your trip. Additional Experiences In addition to top attractions, there are several experiences we highly recommend to add to your itinerary to make your trip even more memorable. 1. Rome Street Food Tour with Local Guide With this tour, you get to taste your way through Rome's street food scene on this gourmet walking tour. Sample a variety of street foods, such as zucchini flowers, suppli, pastries, and pizza, while taking in the impressive scenery of historic Rome all around you. This tour is ideal for first-time visitors to Rome and for foodies who want to learn more about Roman cuisine. 2. Florence Wine Tasting Experience with Early Dinner With this, you can escape the crowds with a wine tasting experience in Florence. In a cozy, family-run bar, learn about Tuscan wines and wine culture as you sip several different types of wine while enjoying a delicious meal. 3. Venice Sightseeing Walking Tour with a Local Guide This one is recommended because you get to explore the hidden corners of Venice on the walking tour and benefit from local knowledge. Stroll with a small group to the city square of Campo Santa Margherita, see the Scuola Grande di San Rocco, and visit the Basilica di Santa Maria Gloriosa dei Frari. Then cross the Rialto Bridge and walk past the Marco Polo House to St. Mark's Square. We'll leave the links on the video description, so be sure to check them out to learn more about these amazing experiences you can add to your trip. Part 3. The Day-to-Day -day Itinerary Day 1. Get ready for the trip of a lifetime. Today, you'll board your flight from your departure city to Rome, Italy. Upon arrival, you will go through customs and immigration. Transfer and check into your hotel. Put your things away, then fight the jet lag and head out to explore Rome. This afternoon, you'll have time to visit many of the main sites between Palatine Hill and the Spanish Steps. Start off with visiting all the best-known sites of ancient Rome, including the Colosseum, the Roman Forum, the Capitolone Hill, then make your way to Pantheon. Trevi Fountain is a must, which is coming up on your next stop. Be sure to take three coins to throw in the fountain. The first guarantees your return to Rome, the second will ensure a new romance, and the third will ensure marriage. The last few main sites are the Piazza di Spagna and the Spanish Steps. These are definitely worth seeing while you're in Rome. The staircase with 135 steps is a favorite spot amongst tourists to sit, relax, and enjoy the views of Piazza di Spagna. If you have a bit more time, we recommend walking down Via del Babuino. You'll arrive at Piazza del Popolo. In the center of the square is the Flaminio Obelisk, one of the tallest obelisks in Rome, which was housed in the Circus Maximus. To get some of the best views of Rome, Climb the steps from Piazza del Popolo to the top of Pinchin Hill. As the night approaches, make your way down to Trastevere by bus or the help of the metro. The former ghetto is chock full of various restaurants and bars with plenty of entertainment afterward. Day 2 Wake up early today and head for the Vatican. You may want to purchase a walking tour or skip the line ticket to avoid the lengthy queues. Explore one of the world's most extensive and beautiful art collections, in particular, Michelangelo's Creation of Adam in the Sistine Chapel. Vatican City is the world's smallest country, so be sure to head to the post office and send a letter to your loved ones as a reminder of your trip. Afterwards, taste your way through Rome's street food scene on a gourmet walking tour. You'll sample a variety of street foods such as zucchini flowers, suppli, pastries, and pizza, all the while taking in the scenery of historic Rome around you. Day 3 Spend your final day exploring the Capitolone Museums, three of the oldest in the world which contain artifacts from the ancient Roman world. In the afternoon, check out some of Rome's hidden gems such as the Baths of Diocletian, a bathhouse dating back to 300 AD. Afterward, take a stroll down the Tiber River. 
Cross the river then and explore the local neighborhoods and back streets in and around Piazza Navona and the Campo de Fiori, flower market. For dinner, there are lots of restaurants in the area, and the bars and nightclubs stay crowded until long after midnight. Day 4 Continue your Italian adventure to Florence today, just a one and a half hour train journey away. Make your way to your hotel, check in, then head out to explore the city. We recommend booking a sightseeing tour today so you can see all the iconic sights Florence has to offer and learn more about its history. If not, take a self-guided tour, taking in the Church of Santa Croce, the Piazza della Signoria, and the Uffizi Gallery, where you can view the works of Botticelli, Michelangelo, and Leonardo da Vinci. The Cathedral di Santa Maria del Fiore, known simply as the Duomo, is a must. This is not only Florence's religious center, it's also the city's most recognizable attraction. Occupying the Piazza del Duomo in the heart of the city, this massive Gothic cathedral was erected during the 14th century on the former site of the Roman church Santa Reparata. You'll know you're in the right place when you find yourself straining your neck to see the church's massive, iconic dome. The red-tiled cupola was designed by Bruno Lesci and is described as a must-see by experts and travelers alike. This evening, head to the Oltrarno, across the Arno. It is the artisan's neighborhood, filled with quaint streets and wonderful shops and restaurants. The Oltrarno's lively tree-filled center, Piazza Santo Spirito, is unique unto itself. Lined with bars and a more bohemian-style crowd, this is where you will find the locals. Day 5. Get up early and head out to see more of Florence's sights today. Stroll the charming Viale dei Colli to the Piazzella Michelangelo, where you can admire wonderful panoramic views of the city. See Giotto's bell tower, the famous Porta del Paradiso, and the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore. This evening, escape the crowds and head for an exclusive wine-tasting experience. You'll taste Tuscan wines and learn about wine culture from sommeliers at a cozy, family-run bar while enjoying a delicious meal. Day 6 You have another day, so why not take a day trip to experience more of Tuscany? Our favorite trip is the trip to the Tuscan hill towns where you get an authentic feel for the region. Other day trip options are Cinque Terre as well as the Leaning Tower of Pisa. This evening, head back to Piazzale Michelangelo for marvelous views of the city at sunset. Grab dinner at a local eatery, then a visit to the museum in Palazzo Vecchio by night is a must to see some of the greatest masterpieces of the world with no crowds. Stop for an aperitivo before heading back to your hotel. Day 7 Take a short two-hour train ride to Venice today and make your way to your hotel. After checking in, we recommend you make the most of your included two-hour sightseeing walking tour of Venice so that you can get to know the city and be ready for a couple more days of exploring. After your tour, take some time to wander the city's maze of canals and back streets at leisure. Don't worry if you get lost. This is just one of the quirks of the city and you'll get to see a plethora of hidden gems. Day 8 Depart your hotel and make for St. Mark's Square to beat the crowds. Head to the Basilica for early morning mass, taking in the glimmering mosaics inside. Visit the Academia Gallery, the Peggy Guggenheim Collection, and the Frari Basilica to see a collection of academic, artistic, and religious artifacts. No trip to Venice would be complete without a gondola ride. Be sure to hop aboard a gondola and take to the canals of the city, taking in beautiful architecture and history as you go. Day 9 Explore Venice's outlying islands today. Perhaps you'll choose to visit Murano today, a Venice in miniature. Here, you can see the lagoon's famed glass-blowing workshops and learn more about this fascinating technique. Murano is a quiet fishing village with beautifully colored houses, while Torcello offers a glimpse of what old Venice would have looked like. This evening, hop on a Vaporetto to Rialto Bridge, timing your arrival to coincide with sunset. Enjoy a meal at an authentic Italian restaurant, then enjoy a leisurely stroll to Café del Doge to mingle with the locals while enjoying post-dinner ice cream and the best coffee in Venice. Day 10 
enjoy the breakfast at your hotel, or head out early to experience the stunning sunrise and see the peaceful Venice in the morning without tourists. See how the locals get ready for their day and grab a good cup of Italian coffee from a local cafe. Enjoy your final walk and head back to check out from your hotel. Allow enough time to transfer to the airport, say farewell, for now, to Italy and catch your flight home. There you have it, our guide and tips on how to plan this 10-day trip to Italy. Did we miss anything? If you have questions and feedback for us, or if you find this guide helpful and would like to see more itineraries, comment below to let us know. Love this itinerary and want to make it your own? Now you can! Planning a multi-city European trip such as visiting Rome, Florence, and Venice in 10 days can be challenging. Perhaps you want to add more days or more destinations into the trip too, if you have more than 10 days and that's when it gets more confusing. At multicitytrips.com, multi-destination travel and complicated itineraries such as multi-city or multi-country European vacations are our specialties. Visit us at multicitytrips.com today and see how our travel experts can help you personalize your private trip and craft the best vacation package to your dream European destinations.